I remember the day that I decided I was going to raise £10,000. I don't even know where the number came from. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> 10000 yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like that. And then afterwards, I was yeah. like, what have I just yeah. said? <laughs> Hi, guys. So today we're joined by Susie Shasan. She is quite a remarkable lady. She's um, faced some personal challenges in her life head on and has turned what some would see as a negative situation into quite a positive one. She's also added some extra challenges to her life by recently undertaking a kayaking trip. Trip, should we call it a trip? Yeah, we can call it that. <laughs> in, uh, in the French Alps, um, having had no previous knowledge of kayaking, and has raised over 10,000 pounds for charity. So we're gonna hear more about her story today. Are you ready to go? I am indeed. Great, let's do it. So talk, to, talk us through your background, where you were born, where you come from, Okay, so um, I am from the UK, from the south of England. Um, I um, grew up uh, in a fairly turbulent household um, and uh, was sent off to boarding school at 11, which was not a good experience wow. for me. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was quite independent from quite a, a young age and... Um, I suppose you have to be when you're at boarding school, don't you? Yes, yeah. you do. Um, and yeah, I, so I, the minute I could work, I was working. So I started with a job in McDonald's at 17, uh, which taught me how to work really hard. Um, so strong work ethic from yeah, the start. Yeah, very strong yeah. work ethic. And I, I studied hard as well. So this was kind of my, my refuge, I suppose, uh, was into into books and knowledge and studying and and working. I mean, that's great because it could have taken a different turn. You could have had a different refuge somewhere else with <laughs> other activities. So, I uh, could have done indeed, yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's brilliant, yeah. okay. I think I found it quite hard to find my place in the world because um, I wasn't naturally good at one thing. I was reasonably good at quite a few things and I always would end up um, in quite entrepreneurial environments where everything needed doing. Mm. And I quite enjoyed sitting at the top of something and looking at everything that made this business work and having an understanding of it and getting involved in it in some ways. Um, so I've, I've worked in a number of industries over the years, um, always where there's tons to be done and not enough people to do it. So you just roll your sleeves up, get stuck in. Yeah, yeah, roll my sleeves up, get stuck in. And there's something about building foundations as well that, that I enjoy. So you've been involved in entrepreneurial sort of environments quite a lot then. Yes. Yeah. Um, and more recently, I've ended up working for um, a charity called the Blackthorn Trust, uh -huh. um, which um, is a charity that's there for people suffering with long term long term mental and physical illness um, and it's it's very much a, a community so um, people come to Blackthorn and um, they can really bring themselves they don't need to put a mask on um, and it's a place to kind of uh, work in our workshops alongside our, alongside our mentors um, and, and really kind of unpick who am I, why am I here, what am I supposed to be doing with my life. Wow. Um, and like any good charity, there is more to be done than there are people to do it. So I'm obviously right at home. Um, rolling your sleeves <laughs> up. Rolling my sleeves Saying up. Saying yes to everything. Yeah. I'll do that, I'll do that, <laughs> yeah. But it must be really rewarding work though, because you can really have such a huge impact on someone's life for the better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's not everybody's cup of tea, um, but the people who do engage with it, um, you, can, you can see them just finding something that inspires them mm. and uncovering talents that they'd forgotten they had or never knew they had. Um, and, you know, really connecting with, um, with things that give them pleasure in life as well as, you know, revealing maybe some of the challenges that they face and, and together we, we work with them to um, find ways of resolving those challenges. So it might be around housing or benefits or um, all sorts of different things. Um, so everybody who's come into Blackthorn leaves with a little bit more than they started with. That does sound really amazing actually. And 
platforms of charity that you did raise the money for with your indeed, kayaking indeed. experience. So it was over ten thousand pounds you raised. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the day that I decided I was going to raise ten thousand pounds. I don't even know where the number came from. Yeah, that'll do it. Ten thousand, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like that. And then afterwards I was yeah. like what have I just yeah. said? <laughs> you sound like someone who says yes to stuff. Yeah. And I think there's a story behind that, isn't there? There is, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So, um, the, uh, so the, the whole um, decision to, to take on this uh, kayaking challenge tracks back to um, 2016. Um, I hadn't long been an employee for the Blackthorn Trust at that time. Um, and I was... I was newly married um, and yeah I, I thought I was going to have uh, the family life that I had long dreamt of um, and it was you know probably trying to resolve the family that I life that I hadn't really had um, and um, pretty much overnight that dream ended um, it was uh, brutal and traumatising and um, I, I was quite new uh, to the community I was living in, I didn't really know too many people um, and my one constant really during that time was just to keep going to work and um, <clears throat> my colleagues were incredible um, and they sort of picked me up and dusted me off as my life was sort of crumbling around me. Um, and I honestly do not know what I would have done without them. Um, they gave me really exactly the same care that um, any of our service users would have received. And um, bit by bit, I found my strength. Um, and um, I, uh, I, one particular day, needed to be doing something just to uh, take my mind off what was happening around me. And I, I ended up going on a, a day's kayaking course. Um, so a, a little seed was sown that day. Um, it was late summer though, and I really wasn't in any state to, to take that forwards. Um, I knew that I had this connection with water, so I'd get on that water and everything felt so much better and I'd forget about whatever was having, happening to me. Um, but I wasn't in a position to buy a kayak. It, it, it was just a nice experience that I had to kind of put by the wayside. So that was that. So life continued for a while. And um, in October 2017, I went to a festival called Yesterval. I love this. <laughs> I, I love this too. I, I'm scared of <laughs> going to that because I, I will just say yes to everything. <laughs> festival called Yesterval is the brainchild of a guy called Dave Cornthwaite. And he, um, I think he decided a long time ago that he didn't want to be spending his life um, sitting at a desk earning his living and that he wanted a more active um, style of, of life and, uh, and if he could make a living out of doing it so much the better. And, and Sounds so, perfect. Indeed. Yeah. And, and, he, um, <coughs> and he, he built this lovely community around him of people who, who kind of wanted the same thing. And I felt really drawn to going to this festival. I'd been following Dave on his um, Facebook page as he'd gone and done all his various adventures. And I turned up at Yesterville and the thing that was really striking was how friendly everybody was. It, it was it was lovely, like everybody was open for a conversation and suddenly all these possibilities started arrive, arising as I talked to more and more people. Um, but the one thing I wasn't talking about was what had happened to me and... Um, Why did you go? Um, I, I think I just felt like, okay, well if I'm not going to have the life that I thought I was going to have, maybe it's time to look at what the other possibilities are. So um, you were open to something, you wasn't sure what that thing was? No. And I think people who go to a festival called Yesterval, they tend to be... <laughs> Some are an optimist, yeah. they're open to a new experience, they want to try something and I think that must be such a, that, that probably came at the right time for you. It really yeah. did, yeah. it really did. I was, um, I was much stronger in myself by, by that point point. Um, 
and you, you would go um, basically you'd go and listen to different people speaking about things that they'd done and they were all quite ordinary people yeah. who'd done amazing things and um, and between sessions they would pitch to see who you know, so you know each one would say I'm going to talk about my trip to the Andes or whatever and, and you, you would pick who you were going to listen to and I was really aware of um, trying to just follow what drew me in so um, you know not to overthink it but just to see where I was drawn and, and who I who I wanted to go and listen to and um, I think everybody who I listened to that weekend um, played some little role in drawing me towards making this decision to become a kayaker but uh, there was one in particular um, his name is Darren Edwards and uh, he was on the stage on Saturday night so we were all sitting in the, the tent and um, he comes on in his wheelchair and describes how basically at exactly the same time as my marriage had been falling apart he had um, gone out climbing and basically come off the edge of the cliff let go of the safety rope instead of grabbing hold of it oh God. and had fallen I don't know how far but far enough to leave him paralyzed from the chest down wow. yeah. and this is a young guy I think he was 27 28 years old and suddenly his life had been upended I mean obviously in a very different way from mine yeah. um, but I could see as he was talking about this experience the rawness of it and it absolutely keyed into mine and he described how he'd um basically he, he just had a moment of i just don't know if i can do this life um and somehow from that ended up ordering himself a kayak before he'd even left hospital <laughs> and flash forward a year had just been accepted into the para canoe wow. squad for gb amazing so uh, there was uh, it absolutely unraveled me this speech he gave i think because it was so heartfelt and um and real and i sat there and i thought yeah i i need to do something with this i've got to finish this off um let's buy a kayak <laughs> <laughs> well well <laughs> there was the first challenge because um i was in no position to buy a kayak oh. <laughs> and um i i remember I, I i spoke to a few people um this had been on the saturday night and we still had a bit more festival to go on the sunday morning and again i was talking to people around me um and there was a lovely journalist I spoke to and, and I told her my story and she said, I think that's an amazing story, go and do something with it. And, you know, all these little words of encouragement made me go, OK, maybe I could do something. Um, and I, as I drove off, I remember thinking, I know there's a load of obstacles here, like the fact I don't own a single shred of kit <laughs> just for starters um, and, and I'm, I'm going to let all of those just be all of those obstacles I'm just going to watch them be removed so Monday morning came and I went to see my boss and I said I'm going to do a kayaking adventure and I'm going to do it for Blackthorn and she said oh right well if you need some sabbatical time then you know that's that's no problem we can talk about that and I thought oh first obstacle Gone. removed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um this uh, and then this really could have have stayed um just a thought um it would have been so easy to back out of oh, it yeah. um but i kept talking about it with people and i think this was really key like it just kept coming up in conversation and i'll be honest at the beginning i was thinking nice little kayak down some canals just gentle little streams yeah that'd be yeah. lovely yeah. and and, ducks uh, there as well. Yeah, I mean, it could be absolutely, absolutely lovely. Uh, one of the speakers had talked about, you know, whatever is, like the adventure doesn't have to be the most extreme thing. It could be whatever seemed the adventure for you. So I was thinking, this sounds great. And then someone said, 
Yeah, but Susie, who's going to pay you ten thousand pounds <laughs> to do that? It sounds like a really nice holiday. That's hilarious. So, <laughs> so at that point, I thought, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> so I decided oh. to turn the heat up on it, and that was where I went from a nice canal scenario to white water. Oh gosh! And either way, it was going to be in France. But I had no idea about rivers in France or what that actually meant. Um, so, you know, I carried on with this idea and um, I'd gone to meet with a photographer who um, I'd done some work with for charity and um, we, we were chatting about different project ideas and uh, he, he literally, I, I had my hand on the handle of the door about to go and he said um, so you know is there anything else and I was like well I'm thinking about doing this project and he was like oh we can do a photo shoot if you like and I was like okay Aye. and uh, <laughs> and that was when it started to get serious so we put a date in the diary um, and um, and, and yeah, went down to a very cold Ramsgate Harbour. Lovely. Mid December. Were you questioning what am I doing? This. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I, I basically borrowed various bits of kit, which included an inflatable kayak from Lidl. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there we were on the end of the pier, doing this uh, this shoot, and and somehow. There's something about putting an idea into image that um, is really helpful because it makes something tangible mm. um, and not only does it make it tangible, you can start writing about it and putting photos with it and, and publishing things and so that's what happened. Um, so I started writing articles and they were being published and I'm thinking, oh, I actually have no way out of this yeah. now. <laughs> I was going to say, did you find, did you, so what, what it sounds like, and I could be so totally wrong, is like when you're going through this stage up to this point, there's still a little voice in your head, you, you, maybe you could still come out of it, you could still wiggle out of it, but the more you talk about it, you become more accountable, people will start asking you, oh, well, when's the date, when do you plan to do this, how do I sponsor you, then you can't really get out, can you? No. So, uh, wow, I mean, how were you feeling up to this point? Um, well, I was, I was aware that I was talking a good talk and that the reality might be somewhat different, yeah. but um, I, was, I was kind of excited because um, the, the number of people that got involved very quickly made me think, oh, this, this has got legs. Yeah. Um, and there was something about... Um, all these people coming on board that meant it was it started to be carried by more than just me mm. even though ultimately it was down to me to do the training and so on but actually um, yeah it, I, I was more and more accountable each day but also there were other people helping yeah um, and suddenly these big conundrums in terms of well how was I going to get my hands on any kit became resolved um, so I made some very key acquaintances um, one of whom is a guy called Sam who runs um, Kent Canoes which unsurprisingly is a canoe and kayak oh, store yep. and, uh, <laughs> and uh, very quickly uh, so I said oh this is what I'm doing and it's going to be in France and he's like right well you'll be going to the Alps then I'm like, oh right oh, okay I didn't know that. Brilliant. will I <laughs> Sam very kindly put me in touch with um, various um, manufacturers of equipment yeah. um, and I mean what he doesn't know about boats probably isn't worth knowing so I felt like I was really well guided by yeah. him and uh, he introduced me to um, Lee Valley Paddle Sports Club um, which is at the Whitewater Centre in Essex so where all the um, Team GB train for Amazing. slalom and uh, suddenly I had my training structure around me and also um, I was put in touch with um, an amazing coach who um, he has um, trained his daughter since she was really young um, and she's now in the uh, freestyle team for GB. So wow. um, I was 
amazing. Uh, so lucky, so lucky. And you must have strengthened your confidence when you've got all these people around you. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, knowing that people are turning up and giving their time again, it was, um, it, it was really key to me staying on board with it because, yeah. quite honestly, like the winter is just not the time of year you want to be starting to learn to kayak. I couldn't think of anything worse. <laughs> it was miserable. I, I rarely leave my house in the winter. <laughs> People don't see yeah. me. I, I just, I vanish in winter. I just, car, home, that's it. I don't go anywhere else. No, yeah. well, and this is really mostly what I fancied, but instead every Wednesday night, Lovely. I was driving from Kent to Essex <laughs> and uh, getting on the water, which would be probably around four degrees. Lovely. Um, sometimes driving wind and rain and um, I, I think you know having all these other people turn around turn up and be there you could not with me yeah. there was no way I was not no. going to go yeah. Um, but <clears throat> but yeah skill set and weather were an all-time low um, <laughs> and, and they those were really difficult times for me you know just in terms of um, the frustration at not being able to do what I wanted to be able to do, but also um, realising quite quickly that um, I had a major fear of moving water. Mm. Um, so you get, some people are really, I don't know, they might have some sense of fear, but it's not enough to um, stop them in their tracks. Whereas for me, we ended up with what was regularly called the face of terror. And um, it, it was- Too many pictures. <laughs> probably. <laughs> 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 it, it was just, I, I, I just panicked. So I, I would find myself on water, which as I look at it now, I realize, yes, it was moving water, but it was not really, it was no big deal. Um, but to me, it was I, the, the idea that I could get capsized at any it's moment. It's unpredictable, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. and that's exactly what it was. It was unpredictable, and you know, I'm used to being quite controlling in my yeah. own life, and I like <laughs> to know where I'm at. And this, you know, the idea that I could just be upright one moment and then catch the edge of my boat yeah. and under another moment was really. It, it was too much almost I mean, at the time. Excuse the pun, but you really did throw yourself in the deep end. I did. And yeah, that must have been quite a shock to the system on yeah. many levels. Well, most people have done quite a lot of flat water training before they start putting Not themselves in the Not you, you like go straight water. to... <laughs> 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 Forget all that easy stuff. Let's go, uh, Let's go straight, straight to the, the Alps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a theme in my life. It's oh, really? not the first yeah. time. Yeah. How do you feel about future kayaking now then? Well, I haven't. I've been back three weeks now, and I've, I've I haven't stopped. So yeah. um, I've um, yeah, I've been uh, back onto the legacy course, which was quite an experience oh, because right. having been on real rivers, which are a whole different ball game, yeah. um, suddenly I was aware really how safe this environment is. You know, I um, when I was doing my training, it really put me in touch with this, like, oh, I might die. You know, it's like fundamental, like survival mechanisms kick in. Um, but you come back to it and you go, all of this really is a known quantity to me. There aren't any rocks underneath. There are people on the bank who will save me if I can't save myself. Yeah. You know, this is as safe as it gets. So. Um, yeah, it's nice to go back now. Yeah. And it's also nice to go back without the pressure um, because I think spending six months trying to get to the level I needed to be to be on those real rivers, um, it was a lot of pressure and um, at times it wasn't enjoyable. You know, no. like um, it, it was just hard graft. So to go back now and be able to play with it a bit more and. Um, yeah just experiment and become a bit more independent as well because prior to that i'd been sort of following my coach around like like a duckling <laughs> <laughs> so there's no future plans with well, no plans just yet for any more major challenges no i think no. i'm i'm letting the dust settle yeah, for a yeah, while and yeah. trying to work out what this was but it sounds like you might get itchy feet it's yeah. distinctly possible i mean the the skill set that i grew from this project was um was really satisfying so it wasn't just about learning to kayak it no. was about pulling together um, a campaign 
to fundraise. Yeah. It was networking. Yeah, I think I must have met almost I don't know somewhere around the hundred hundred people probably, wow. um, and also you know how marketing um, one of these projects works, all the social media side of it, it, it. You know, it really was much bigger than just the kayaking in terms of the skills that I came away with, and um, I think I really enjoyed it being my idea and being me being in the middle of it. Um, and I, I have an appetite for that and to do that again yeah. in some way. Um, it's like going back to our conversation about um, the energy from a startup sort of environment. It's almost similar to that. There's yeah. so much buzz and energy and, and it, it drives you, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Maybe stay away from that yesterday this year. I'm speaking of oh, that yeah, yesterday yeah. this year. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> So goodness only knows what I might come oh, away with this year. I look year. forward to this. I yeah. know, well so do I. Well, I can see myself getting quite carried away there. Maybe I, I'll do some more research before I put my name down to go to yesterday, <laughs> but you might see me there. I advise yeah. just it sounds not been thinking amazing. about it too much oh, and just absolutely. going. It sounds like it wasn't just raising money for charity. You've really grown from this experience on so many levels. And I, I think that in itself is inspiring for a lot of people to I guess put themselves out there because you're going to learn so much about yourself by being exposed, being in situations that you're not used to. Because we like to keep ourselves in the bubble sometimes because yeah. it's comfortable, it's safe, and you can, it's predictable and you can control it. You can control the outcome, but as soon as you deviate from that, oh no, that's scary. Yeah. You're, you're in the unknown, you're exposed, something could go wrong, but what? Yeah. You're not going to die. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think also um, there was something about stepping out and being honest about what had happened to me as well that was quite important. So um, somebody very recently said to me, you know, most people don't talk about, you know, marriage breakup. And, you know, I, I, I felt a real sense of failure and shame about it for quite some time. And... Um, the irony is that by talking about it, um, I actually transformed it into something that um, helped me really grow from it and maybe made it feel like it hadn't all been for nothing. Mm, sure. Wow. I'm inspired. I might, might go buy a kayak. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let me know. Oh, time. God, yeah. <laughs> If you could go back five years, what advice would you give yourself, knowing what you know now? Gosh, so five years ago, ooh, <laughs> wow, um, I'm not sure I could give myself any advice in the sense that uh, it would I, I, it would be don't get into the relationship <laughs> you were just getting into at that point but but then you probably wouldn't do the kayaking exactly I yeah. would have done this yeah. so I can't um, so it's not as if maybe there's things that you would have liked um, to have turned out differently but they're not necessarily regrets because I guess you you are more I think you're better now you have more experience now more knowledge now more you're more fearless than you were before yeah. probably yeah, yeah I mean I think it would it would be the only thing I could say is it's all going to be okay yeah so just um, chill out yeah yeah even though this is going to be like Painful. the biggest hell ride yeah. you've ever been on <laughs> at times um, yeah. it, it's not for nothing yeah. and uh, and it, it will be worth it I mean that's an amazing thing to tell yourself <laughs> and I think I would have loved to give myself that advice a few years ago because we all have our own personal challenges and you can't, you can't see the end when you're going through no, it. No, you can't. And everything just seems like hell. But to come out of that and just think, I survived that, that teaches you loads about yourself. It does. Yeah. And you realise that probably there was no other way you were going to learn it. Yeah. And that sometimes the things that seem the most unjust and unfair are actually what you need to experience in order to really make a massive change. You could summarise that into being more open to stuff that's happening and yeah. not being scared of it. Yeah. Not staying in the safe bubble. Yeah. And Great also advice. not looking for somebody else to make me feel safe actually. No, no. You know, doing that for yeah. myself. I never quite understood when couples say they complete me. 
because you should be a complete person as you are. Before. You don't need someone else yeah. to complete you. So, but then I'm single, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know about that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's all for today. So uh, we hope you've enjoyed this interview. It's certainly an inspiring journey. We'll um, put the social media links for Susie up on the uh, description. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.